Hi, welcome back to Kinetics in Physical Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so we are going to continue our discussion of complex reaction mechanisms. And before we really get into more specific mechanisms, we have to go over two very, very fundamental techniques for determining uh, rates and determining expressions for the rates or um, determining the mechanisms. Those two methods are called the steady state approximation and the other one is called the pre-equilibrium approximation. We're ultimately going to break those into a couple of videos and then after that we're going to do um, examples of those and how you go about um, doing these techniques. It turns out that these techniques are very very important because almost every single a specific complex reaction mechanism that you'll have to do requires the use of either pre-equilibrium approximation or steady state approximation. So these are sort of like the two fundamental toolbox units that you have to have to do everything else. So they're really important to, to get down. Um, so the first one we're going to do is steady state approximation. And we're going to find that actually, depending on which uh, technique that you use to get a rate expression, the actual expression can vary a little bit. So both of these methods um, don't necessarily give you the same answer. But in this video, we're going to do the steady state approximation. And that's what this is right here. All right, so the first thing to go over is our, ge our general reaction that we're going to do for both these methods. So I have one reactant. This is reactant one, which is A. Reactant two is B. These two are going to come together, and they're going to be in equilibrium with an intermediate C. All right, the forward reaction of this equilibrium is defined by a constant K1, that is a rate constant. Um, these two constants right here are rate constants, not equilibrium constants, that's very important. I wanna make that very clear. K1, K minus one, and K2 are rate constants. The reverse equilibrium reaction from C to B plus A, that decomposition is governed by rate constant K minus one, okay? Um, and then C, the intermediate, will be converted into the product D, okay? And that's governed by rate constant K2. All right, so what's really important in steady state approximation is to know exactly what your intermediate is. And in general, for a, a simple version of a complex reaction mechanism, it's this thing in the middle. Whatever this is, generally is your intermediate, okay? In this case, it's C. Now, one, there's one really very important assumption in the steady state approximation. And for different reactions, it has different levels of validity. Some, sometimes it's very valid, sometimes not so much. The assumption is that that intermediate's concentration does not change with time. Okay, how do we quantify or give an expression for how the concentration of the intermediate changes with time? Well, it's the derivative of the concentration of the intermediate with respect to time. And since in this case the intermediate is given by C, it's the derivative or the change in C with respect to time. Okay, so you're saying in steady state approximation that the, the concentration of that intermediate doesn't change with time. It doesn't mean that the concentration is zero. In fact, it, it's not zero. The concentration of the intermediate is not zero. It's some finite number that's greater than zero but it's not zero. We're saying that the change in its concentration with respect to time is zero, okay? So what does that really mean? Well, there's some, con some concentration of that intermediate, but through this equilibrium, whatever gets formed gets transformed into D, okay? So it's sort of like whatever is coming in is coming out. So that means the concentration is really not changing with time. And we'll look at this graphically in another video. But that's really important. So if the concentration doesn't change with time, then it's equal to zero, okay? And what we're essentially gonna do is we're just going to set this change in intermediate concentration with respect to time equal to zero, but we, have, we can get an expression for this uh, change in C with respect to time, okay? So let's do this. So we first wanna look at what form C. Well, this forward reaction. So that would be K1 times concentration of A times concentration of B. Then we have two reactions that take away from C, and that's this reverse one, so K minus K minus one times the concentration of C, 
And then the other one that takes it away is going in the right direction, so minus K2 times the concentration of C. And if that doesn't make sense to you where we at least got this expression right here, we have another video explaining that in a little more detail. Okay, but it's really important that you know where this comes from, but I'm going to assume that you know where it comes from, and now we're actually going to manipulate this to determine the rate law. Okay, the important thing here, and it's actually very important, is that you can set this whole thing equal to zero, and that's actually one of the defining features of steady state approximation. Okay, when we do a lot more examples of this, you'll see that this method is very, very repetitive. Okay, you look for the intermediate, set its change in concentration with respect to time equal to zero, determine the rate law, and then you just manipulate it. So here's the, th the, the other thing about steady state approximation, kind of a, thing, a checklist of what I would do. I would get expression, get an expression for the change in the intermediate with respect to time, and set it equal to zero. That's your first step. The second step is once you do that, you want to determine an expression actually for the intermediate. So what is the intermediate equal to? In this case, the intermediate C. But the reason you do this is you're always doing this for the intermediate. You're not doing this for A, you're not doing it for B, you're ultimately doing this di, dt, and concentration of I, you're doing this for the intermediate. That's why I've done it here, and I'm ultimately determining the concentration of the intermediate here. So what can I do? Well, these two terms right here, this one, and this one are both negative. I'm going to add those to the other side. And the expression that I get then is K1 times the concentration of A times the concentration of B is equal to, now notice this term right here is a C, this is a C. I actually factored out the C, and it's the equal to the concentration of C times K minus 1 plus K2. All right, now I can solve for C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by K minus 1 plus K2. All right, so divide that over here, K minus one plus K two, and that gets me the concentration of C. So I've determined that the concentration of C is given by K one times the concentration of A times the concentration of B divided by the concentration, or divided by, excuse me, K minus one plus K two. All right, now this right here, this concentration of C, why did we solve for that? Because remember, and this goes back to a gen chem concept, but you also learned it in PCHEM, that intermediates, you can't really measure the concentration of those. All right? They're so short-lived that you really can't measure them. Okay? You can measure A, you can measure B, you know those, you put those into the reaction, right? And you can determine these rate constants. So the reason I'm going to determine this in all, and I'm going to determine an expression for C is because I'm actually going to substitute this expression in for C in another expression. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to find the rate of the overall reaction, right? What's the rate of the overall reaction? It's really the conversion of this intermediate to D. That's the overall reaction. That's the overall rate. So how do I get the rate of this reaction? Well, that's the change in D with respect to time, right? And sometimes when I'm talking about the overall reaction rate, I'm just gonna put this R here. Just know that means that's the rate of the overall reaction, okay? But that R is the same thing as derivative of D. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Derivative of D with respect to time, okay? So what is that equal to if I look at my expression here? Well, that's K2, this rate constant, times the concentration of C. But, I already found an expression for C, and I can't measure C, but I can take this entire thing right here, right, that whole expression, and I can substitute that in for this C. So ultimately what I get is K1 times this K2, which comes from this, times the concentration of A times the concentration of B, divided by K minus 1 plus K2. And this would be the overall expression for the rate and assuming I did it by the steady state approximation, okay? Um, it's also really important when you derive a rate expression to say what method you use. Did you use steady state approximation or the other one, pre-equilibrium approximation, okay? Now, one thing that's really important and why, you know, why steady state approximation has been important in the past is um, if you are a chemistry major, that's probably why you're taking physical chemistry, um, you're probably going to have to take biochemistry, and some of you may actually have already taken biochemistry, and perhaps you know um, that 
that there is um, something called a michaelis menten enzyme, and that's governed by what we call michaelis menten kinetics. And there's a michaelis menten rate law. And it's that the rate of an enzyme is equal to the V max of the enzyme times the substrate concentration divided by the Km plus the substrate concentration. This is actually the rate of a michaelis menten enzyme. Now, it doesn't look like this necessarily. It really doesn't look like this at first glance, but we'll actually show this in another video that you actually use steady state approximation to derive this rate law. Now, it's been there's been a few substitutions here, but when we do the derivation in another video, you'll see that steady state approximation is used to get this equation for the rate of a Michaelis-Menten enzyme, thus Michaelis-Menten kinetics. And for, for that, remember, one of the assumptions we're making is that the intermediate number one is short-lived, but that its concentration doesn't change with time. Okay, that's perfect for enzymes because in general it really doesn't. Okay, every single enzyme, just about its active site, does really one reaction per cycle. So overall, intermediate comes in, gets transformed to product. Next re next cycle, intermediate comes in, gets transformed to a product. So because of that, steady state approximation is actually a very good method for determining the michaelis menten um, equation. And it turns out overall it's, it's um, pretty close to being correct, very, very accurate for enzymes. There are some um, types of reactions where steady state approximation may not be as accurate. And why would it not be accurate for some reactions? Which reactions would it not be accurate for? Well, it wouldn't be accurate for reactions where the intermediate concentration does change significantly with time. Okay, The, uh, the accuracy of this method is dependent on the derivative of the intermediate with respect to time being zero. If it's pretty close to zero, basically negligible, then this becomes relatively accurate. But if this change right here is significant, then steady state approximation is really not that accurate and you may have to choose a different method. Okay, And actually in the next video we're going to go over the pre-equilibrium approximation and it turns out there's some um, reactions where maybe that one is a little bit more accurate. And then after that we're going to do some, we're going to look at these graphically and then we're also going to um, ultimately do some practice problems with these as well. Okay, And we'll do a few of those so you get comfortable. The thing about these two techniques that you re I really need to make clear is that they're used for everything else in your kinetics chapter, okay, for complex reaction mechanisms. But the nice thing about this is once you get the hang of these, they are very mechanical. You do the same thing for every single one of these that you'll do. Okay, it's the same method over and over again. All right, so I hope this video helped you get a handle on the steady state approximation. And the next video we'll do pre-equilibrium approximation. Thank you for watching this video. Um, and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.